empowered. Um, we are going to talk about our next slide. This is the week of April 20th through the 24th. This is one of our six remaining slides for 20th century and furthermore for the rest of the year. So let's go ahead and talk about our slide that's in front of us as I get this bigger. Okay, so the name of this one is called Maryland Diptych. And if you remember what diptych means, it means two. So you actually see two screens that are here. Um, combined, the actual size of this is a six by nine, um, but we are going to uh, reference how it's broken into two, two sections, and we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so the name of this is called Maryland Diptych. It's by the artist, his name is Andy Warhol, 1962. So this is oil, acrylic, and silk screen enamel on canvas. So this is our only one that's actually dealing with silk screen. And this is part of the pop art movement, and this is located in the Tate Modern Art Museum that's located in London, okay? And again, the size of this entirety is a six by nine, okay? And just to talk a little bit about the form for a second, um, it's broken up where there's 50 images. So in each of the particular um, screens, the canvases, it's actually doing like a five. So one, two, three, four, five by five, one, two, three, four, five. So it's like a five by five grid. And um, just one for you to understand that. So you got a five by five grid of her faces in color. And then you also have it um, a whole nother set that are five by five in black and white. And it's repeated across during the um, across these two halves of the surface. OK, so um, pop art, let's go ahead and just define that. Um, it's basically focusing on art that is mass produced commercial goods. They are popular images of modern world and advertisement. Warhol, basically, he's going to join this movement in 1961. So one more time, pop art, it focuses on mass produced commercial goods. Um, they are popular images in modern world in an advertisement. It could be things that are, again, related to advertisement, such as like pictures, images, photos, or it could actually be the consumption of, of mass produced goods. And then silkscreen, it's basically, um, if you can also put this down, it's a development of photosensitive silk, then pushed, uh, pushed with ink through, um, pushed ink through, and then it's pushed onto the canvas. Okay, so, um, and that that's basically what he's using for his medium. He uses, Andy Warhol is using this photographic um, imagery of the silkscreen process, and it's a repetition that makes the art um, not... Oh, this is going to get into a little bit more. I'll, uh, excuse me for that. I'll talk a little bit about that one in just a second. So again, um, just referring to back to the silk screen definition. So um, a little bit about Andy Warhol, just to know a little bit about his background, is he actually, when he was a child, he had developed a nervous system um, that was a disease, and he had it when he was a child. If you hear my child... <laughs> If you, speaking of children, if you hear my children in the background, I'm sorry. Um, he basically, when he was sick, he would he would draw in reference um, to being in bed, um, and he used and he loved to draw. Um, when he was 14, his dad passed away, and he left him money to go to art school one day. So he actually did go to art school. He went to Carnegie Mellon, where he studied pictorial design in college. Um, he later on be, uh, was a commercial artist in New York and he worked for Glamour magazine. So he's definitely into like the photography and graphic design. Um, just another f quick fact is in 1964 he opened, it was called The Factory, um, and basically that was his studio where he actually created his greatest painting, um, which is this one, the Maryland um, diptych. And then unfortunately in 1968 he was shot by they said by some sort of a deranged lady three times, and that's how he ultimately passed away. So why the subject of Marilyn Monroe? Okay, because that's who is being picked, depicted on here 50 times. So basically, he admired her. Um, he thought about her life tragically. This was actually done shortly after she had committed suicide um, or drug overdose, not too sure how she actually passed away. But she, he was admired by her for uh, being dead and 
the absence of emotions that would take that would that would be looking at as appealing um, when when viewing this particular one this particular piece so um, looking at her and the color side um, that's the side that if you wanted to reference this is like the life side and then this is like the death side so again um, admired her for being dead with the absence of emotions and her looks are appealing with the dyed hair her makeup her smile um, basically he is uh, recreating this in similar art. So this actually doesn't come from like a drawing that he did. Um, so a little bit about the composition he made. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. He made two silver canvases, silk screened and photographed of Marilyn Monroe uh, 50 times. Um, the picture gets progressively more blurry, showing her legend will fade away. So we're talking about how it transitions from color into black and white. And then as you notice, the copies of her, as it kind of starts to get more to the right, they kind of start to kind of like fade and disappear a little bit. So um, and that's that's good. That's not good, but um, just that's what she he was actually going after. So the right side, um, just to talk about it for a second excuse me, the left side, um, it's talk, It's referring to garish colors, and I know I said that term when we were looking at William de Kooning and Woman One, so it's using kind of like those bright, kind of, not dirty colors, but just, um, you could almost classify them as, as pop colors, they're colors that are bright, so you see like that purple, the um, kind of magenta color, the gold, the orange in the background, the the teal they don't really have like a certain kind of like color palette um, and a little bit of red for her um, lips so talking a little bit about garish colors while uh, which he loved using them um, basically he used these colors to basically mask her appearance like Hollywood be, be, the media did uh, to make her and it kind of made her seem like she was higher she was like a higher being almost not human and basically, this is what he's known for doing is kind of um, using the use of satire to celebrate the celebrities, even though he was one himself. And what's kind of interesting as it kind of looks more on the right side now, um, it turns to the black and white. It kind of transitions from the life to the death. And he appropriates an image that already exists. And um, So this is what I was trying to say earlier. He, It's not that he drew this photo. This actually came from her headshot from a movie called Niagara and so what he does is he takes the image and he makes it flat so yes you can see a little bit of some shading but I think that's what is actually going to ultimately kind of like fade away till you get to the right side um, as it transitions from the le from the life to the death side um, ah, going back so real quick um, he is making some reference to a little bit of like some Christianity. Um, gold makes her look like a Byzantine icon. And what I guess that is going at as far as referencing the form of Christian painting um, in its title, so the diptych, and then it invites us to worship the legendary icon. So um, again, she's painted in many colors and wears, it's almost like she's wearing a mask. It they even referenced her as looking like a corpse um, in the article. So just the amount of gaudy makeup that she's got on. Um, and basically it's, it's almost like it's hiding the real her because we, you know, we didn't know she was going through, like, I'm, I don't know if the public knew of how much uh, they knew of her personal life. So Warhol likes to celebrate themes of death um, and celebrities. And if you notice on the edges, we're almost done for this one, guys. If you notice on the edges, they're smudged. And it looks like this was done... Uh, looks good at first when you, um, but then when you get a closer, like you can see the covering of the black print, um, like the media images of Marilyn Monroe covering who she really was. It's kind of almost like it's, it's kind of going over that. So that's intentional. And then 
Um, the last thing to just, to just mention, he's not only influenced by pop art, um, but he's also influenced by the art history. So, um, especially with the fact that he lives in New York and there's so much art in New York. Um, he was also influenced a little bit by um, abstract expressionists such as Jackson Pollock and William de Kooning. And basically where their tie would be into this is their... Um, their action painting, how they seem as seemingly uh, with careless holding, handling of the paint, and it's all over composition, uh, the even distribution of form and color across the entire canvas, so such that the viewer's eye wandered without focusing on one on one spot. So again, that carelessness of handling of the paint, we could clearly make a reference with that uh, regarding William D. Kooning and his action painting and even Jackson Pollock um, across the entire canvas. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap us up. I don't really have anything else to mention or review with you guys. Um, hang on tight. We're almost there.